Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we're going to talk about uh, some advanced features of uh, three-dimensional shapes and uh, a bit of advanced uh, shader coding. And we are going to see specifically how we can render a shape, like a GGL grid shape, inside uh, some texture. So, for example, instead of rendering the, the shape inside our, our window, we are going to render this shape inside uh, a texture. And uh, not only that, but we are also going to see how to fill different textures with different content from a single shader applied to our grid shape. Let's first introduce the concept of buffers. So when we render our grid shape to our window, like that, uh, the color of the shape are rendered inside uh, the color buffer, which is basically uh, our final image that we see in the window. Now, we can render this image, instead of rendering it in the color buffer, uh, we can choose um, some other different buffers where to render this image. These buffers inside Max are represented by GGL textures. So we can render uh, our shape directly inside our texture. Let's see how to do that. We have to give to our greedy shape the attribute capture and then the name of our texture, for example, texture zero. Now we have to give a name to this texture and then if we bang the content of this texture out, we can see that it will render our shape. So our shape is not being rendered anymore inside the JIT window, but is rendered inside our texture. And this is pretty handy because then with that we can do some post-processing work just on this shape and then sum this texture again back uh, um, with other textures and put it inside uh, our final cheat window. Now I want to talk with you about uh, an even deeper thing that we can do with uh, rendering uh, buffers. And this is that we can render multiple textures. For example, if we do something like this, We can capture this shape to multiple textures, but uh, uh, for, the, for the moment they have all the same content. For example, we could render the normals of our shape and the depth buffer in uh, the second texture and the position of our shape in the third buffer, or which is the third textures. In order to do that, we need to apply to this shape a shader. So let's create a shader object, JITGL shader, which allow us to write a JL, uh, JLSL shader inside our patch. And let's call this shader, let's call this shader with a name so we can use it with our grid shape. So we give the, shade, the grid shape the shader attribute shady. And then by default, our shader here is empty. So let's read inside simply a default. Uh, let's read inside a pass-through shader. Let me actually open this shader uh, with Atom. So I have this shader here. Let me open it with Atom. So if we take a look at this shader, we can see that we have a texture as input here. And then we have the vertex shader, which pass uh, as varying variables. We pass the normal, uh, the um, varying variable called position and the texture coordinate to the fragment shader. So in the vertex shader, we calculate the normal in the usual way with the GL normal matrix multiplied by the GL normal variable. We calculate the GL position to pass it to the fixed uh, function pipeline. Then we calculate the texture coordinates as a vector two. And then we calculate a varying variable called position that we created here. And we uh, calculate this, uh, this position in I coordinates. 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely take a look at uh, my shader tutorial that I that is on my website. I will put the link in the description. And now we pass the GL color as uh, the GL front color to the fragment shader. Now in the fragment shader we have the declaration of the same varying variables. Uh, we have also the declaration of the texture uniform that we are actually not using. And then we simply pass out the GL frag color as uh, uh, the GL color. So uh, the output of the fragment shader will be simply the color of our shape. So now if we if we change the color of our shape to red, we should see our shape becoming red in all three uh, in all three the textures. But let's see how we can fill multiple buffers with uh, our shader that we have here. Well, first of all, we need another parameter. And let's call this parameter Jill far clip because we need to access to the far clip of our uh, of our frustum, so the far clipping plane of our world. And this will be of type float. And we have to use a state variable. So we write state, and then this state variable is called far clip. So we can close this attribute here. Now we bind this attribute to the fragment shader. Uh, far clip to the fragment shader and then we can use this uh, attribute uh, this uniform basically in the fragment shader by writing the name of the uniform like that Okay, so now uh, we can fill multiple uh, different targets so different buffers from our shader by instead of writing gl uh, frag color, we have, we have to write gl frag data. And then this is an array of buffers. And for example, in the first buffer, we simply pass the gl color. So this will be our simply uh, writing in the buffer uh, the color. So in the first texture, the color of our shape. Now we can create, uh, we can access another buffer, which is the array number one because we have three buffers uh, connected to the shape so we can access three of them and in this for example we can pass uh, uh, we can write uh, we can write into this buffer the normals of our shape so for example um, we pass we are passing uh, a varying variable called normal here so we can pass the normals but first let's normalize them and then we can pass the depth of our shape, uh, which is basically the distance of the shape from the camera. So in order to do that, we have to get the length of our position of our shape, which means basically uh, the distance between our shape and the camera. In order to do that, we simply write something like that. <coughs> the length of the, our position, so which is the actually the distance between our position and the camera since the camera is uh, located uh, at uh, position 0, 0, 0 in i coordinates uh, we simply are subtracting 0, 0, 0 from our position so we can just directly write the length of our position but in order to normalize this result so having it in the range 0 to 1 we have to divide this by our fixed uh, our state variable far clip and then this will be uh, filling our second buffer. So now if we uh, bang uh, our second texture here, we can see that the, we saw we are, we are looking now at the normals of our shape. If we want to look at the, at the depth that we just wrote, as we can see, we wrote it uh, as the fourth um, value of this vector four. Since this is, uh, this is a three-dimensional vector and the normals, uh, is the three co three dimensional coordinates uh, of the normal? Um, we wrote our depth inside the fourth uh, uh, value of this vector. So, in order to access that, uh, let's create a GGL pixel. Let's connect. Uh, let's connect uh, uh, this pixel object, uh, and let's create another P window to visualize our depth buffer. <coughs> 
and let's create uh, let's do something like this inside we simply create another output and then in the first output we put we pass the normals so let's create uh, a back for here with the alpha set to 1 and then from the input one we can switch the x, y and z so our red, green and blue values and from that we can switch uh, uh, the alpha value so the fourth channel of our buffer which will basically be our depth value So, if we do this, uh, we can see that uh, if we bang this texture, we can see that uh, on this P window, we see the Z position of our uh, grid shape. So, the depth value of our grid shape. Basically, it's the distance from the camera of this grid shape. If we, for, exa for example, if we change the Z value of the position of this object, we will see that the camera changed color, but first we need to attach uh, a metro to this texture. So, let's see, if we make this uh, object farther, uh, the, the, that buffer becomes white, uh, more whiter and whiter until it goes over 100 and then our shape disappears because this is our far clip. If we, for example, take the GGL camera and take the far clip uh, attribute, of the camera, if we uh, if we reduce this far clip attribute, so we can see that uh, the depth buffer uh, becomes more white because, uh, as we saw in our shader, we are div dividing the length of the position of the sphere by the far clip. So it makes sense that if we reduce the far clip, uh, the length becomes uh, a bigger value. So this is how we can extract our uh, depth value for every shape in our patch. Uh, let's now fill also our third uh, our third texture. Let's actually connect all these textures to our metro. Let's actually fill also the other texture. We still have one uh, frag data available, so we can write something like that: GL frag data, and that's the number two. And let's make this, for example, equal to the position. Let's create a back for. Let's say position, then zero here. And then on this one, we will be able to see uh, the position of our shape. So let me see if this got updated. Yeah. So uh, in this. Uh, in this buffer, we can see the world position of our shape. For example, if we do something like that, we can see that the color of the position of uh, our frame buffer here changes because we are changing the position in world space. In the left side, it becomes zero because, of course, it, it goes into the negative axis, so it becomes black. So, uh, with this simple shader and this capture attribute, we can capture um, our shape inside uh, some textures and then use those textures, for example, inside GGLPix to make some post processing effect but only related to our shape. And we can use the depth buffer to make some also some more, uh, also some super interesting stuff that we will see in uh, future tutorials. So, uh, I hope this was uh, interesting and useful. If you want to download this patch and a lot uh, other more patches, you can visit my Patreon uh, where you can support me and a lot uh, uh, a fair amount of uh, jitter patches so uh, this is it and uh, see you in the next tutorial ciao